The title is um, Judy Collins Sings Bob Dylan Like a Woman. How does a woman sing Bob Dylan differently from a man? Well, we love, I love this title, Just Like a Woman. I love that song. And uh, I suppose really the title should be Judy Sings Dylan Just Like Judy. But I liked Just Like a Woman. Right. So I used it. And somebody said, that must be a joke. No, it's not a joke. I, so I, then I, I draw the wrong inference then. The implication is not that a woman sings it that much differently from Dylan, but the, that the song title is in itself a play on words that creates the title of the disc. It is. And you know that song was, was intriguing to sing because without changing the gender, it was a very interesting experience for me. I believe, I would not necessarily say this to Bob because I'm not, I, I would be shy about it. I think I know who he wrote that for. It was a woman that oh, a lot of us knew. And, uh, and I think I knew her. And Was it a woman any of us would know? Well, I wouldn't tell you either because oh. <laughs> that would be breaking a, 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 a trust. Breaking a trust. Okay. But I do know who she was, I think. And because I think I know, I think about her when I sing that song sometimes of how fragile she was and of that particular relationship and what it must have been about. And it's an interesting experience to sing the song. I'm singing the songs in concert now, and I'm learning them from the inside out, as you do when you sing them in sure. live concerts. So I'm discovering a lot. You know, one of the songs on this album, I, I don't want to dwell on, on this album all evening, Nor but do si I want since you to. you've asked, <laughs> I, I must tell you. Let's, um, let's do this one, and then let's move on a little bit, yes, as they say. One of the songs that's on the album that, that no one has ever recorded except Dylan is a song called um, uh, Dark Eyes. And it's a gorgeous song, very unusual song, and I'm very pleased that I was able to find it and bring it out. It's from an album called Empire Burlesque, so it's, it's a, very special to me that nobody else but me has done it. Of course, me and Dylan, right. the guy who wrote it. Right, right. Let me ask you here about your dad, the broadcaster. Tell me about your father. What was his job in broadcasting? But, you know, Bob Berkowitz just came by and he said, you know, I grew up in Denver, he said, and everybody always in the studio there was talking about your dad at KLZ. My father was a real maverick, and, and he, he sang Rodgers and Hart, and he sang um, a lot of the great composer's songs, and he had a radio show for my, my life and, and many, many of his, his years in, in uh, broadcasting. So I grew up in the studio. But was he on KLZ in Denver? Yes. Well, first he was in Seattle. Okay. Then he was in L.A., KOA. I can't remember all the call oh, letters. Oh, that's okay. But, but anyway, at NBC in Los Angeles. And then he was in Denver for many years at various radio stations there. So, you know, it was, it was pretty, something very usual for me to go down to the studio and sing, My Funny Valentine. Well, you played the Sweet. piano in those days, too, Yes, didn't I you? did. And I still do, thank God. Thank God I learned to play the piano when I did, because I'd never have the patience today. But I did play the piano, so he would get me down there to the show, and we would sing a duet, and then I'd play a little Mozart or a little uh, Debussy. Yeah, so guest starring on my show today is my daughter, Judy Valentine. That's right? it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. terrific. <laughs> when, you, when you tell the stories about your dad bouncing around, it reminds me of, of my own early days as a broadcaster. You tend to do that when you're young. You bounce around because you, you want to keep moving up and moving up and moving up. And so you find that uh, you stay a couple of years in one place and then you're on to the next. And uh, it's, it's tough on the kids and on the family, although not that difficult. Once we moved to Colorado, we were set, and that's where we stayed. We were lucky in that regard because we had a chunk of years in Seattle and then a chunk in L.A. But Denver... My mother still lives in Denver, and uh, uh, it's it's funny. I I was. Um... I gotta get to the. I gotta oh, get. Oh, there I comes get, your theme song, Tom. Yeah, I gotta get to the commercials here. We'll continue with Judy Collins and some of you on the toll free exchange as the CNBC Orchestra plays us out. We're back with Judy Collins. Why I called you Judy Valentine, I know not, but you, when you sang My Funny Valentine, the name Judy oh. Valentine just popped into my head, you know. I like it. Let me ask you here, I, I was, we were all watching you during the break here in the studio on our big screen monitor, and your eyes were closed, and you looked very serene and very content. What, what were you doing? Taking a little, like, a power meditation there or something? I was taking a little, little break, yeah. I didn't know that the camera was on. That's funny. 
Electronics are amazing. Yes, I was, I was thinking about uh, nothing. Quietly. Well, it looked like you were not on this planet for a few moments. That no, you were just I, <laughs> drifting off in, a, in your own special place, and you seemed at great peace with yourself. I got away there for a few seconds. I'm in New York because I live in New York. I, I've never not lived in New York. I did not know that. I thought. I, yeah, I'm a New Yorker. I'm a transplant from the West, but I've always lived here in the city. Howard in Montebello, <laughs> California. Hello. Hello. Hi, Howard. Uh, actually, it's North Hills, California. Oh, okay. Hi. 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 Valley. Hi, you both. We're fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, doing all right. I have a question for you, Tom, but first, uh, Judy, can you elaborate on how the song Sweet Judy, Blue Eyes uh, came out? It's my favorite song of all time. It's a beautiful and, uh, song. About history. It's a beautiful song. And Stephen and I were having a romance, and he was forming uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. They had just broken up with Buffalo Springfield, and he wrote those beautiful songs. Um, let us say delineating our relationship to some extent and it is and gorgeous. was that okay with you that he wrote those songs that delineated that relationship oh they were so beautiful how I know. could it not I be know. Uh, yeah well you felt a little invaded but uh, art transcends everything isn't that right doesn't it well sometimes jude <laughs> sometimes i mean i could have a career as judy valentine yes you could you could have a career as Judy, anybody, with that, with those pipes and, and that face, anything you call yourself. That you're gonna, you're gonna attract people. Thanks. Now, uh, what's next there, uh, Howard? Oh, I just want to say that I remember you from Channel Four in 1971 when you used to do the the, uh, the news, and when we had uh, Monday Night Baseball here, it was tape delayed, and you'd always look at Ross Porter and say, "Ross, anything coming up tonight?" And he'd say, "Well, there's going to be something exciting happening about you know 9:15." That's right. And I'm not that old. I'm a Cuban Missile Crisis baby. I want you. To, I want you to know, young man, that I was on. Uh, I was on active duty uh, uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis at Dobbins Air Force Base, Georgia. And during that, my tenure on active duty, not one Cuban missile penetrated American airspace. Do not forget that. <laughs> <laughs>